you that are just joining in, I'm taking us live on YouTube right now so that you guys, uh, A, for those of you that subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, you guys can actually see it as well on, on YouTube. But then also this is gonna be the court, the recording of this. Joining in. I'm taking us live on. Okay, perfect. All right. And so here's the link to it. I'm gonna show you guys here as well. I'm gonna send this into the chat so you guys have access to this. But basically it's here on our channel. If you were to search uh, in here, search for Lumi Wealth inside of YouTube, you can find that it's the first video here, getting started with blockchain programming. That's the link. Uh, but I'm also going to send you this link in the chat so you guys have access to it. It's a little bit easier for you that way, all right? Uh, we're also gonna send out the recording of this afterwards as well. So, uh, you know, just in case there. All right, cool, perfect. There's a link. Uh, while also, by the way, while you're on our uh, YouTube channel, while you're on Lumi Wealth, make sure that you like and subscribe to us as well. We have lots and lots of free content that we put out there. Um, and if you guys, you know, hit the, hit the bell and hit subscribe, then you'll get uh, all the notifications when things come out. So for those of you that yes. are subscribed to us on YouTube, you'll actually be able to see this live as well. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. So guys, welcome. This is, uh, as I said, this is, this is our biggest webinar ever. So uh, thank you very much for joining. We've got quite a few people on the line here, which is awesome. It's uh, you guys are clearly just as interested as I am in this course. Um, I think this is going to be a fantastic course and learning some really, really cool stuff. Uh, and I'm very happy to take you through it. Uh, we also have Alexandra here, which is going to be that lead instructor. Um, so welcome, Alexandra. Hello, everyone. <laughs> She is a blockchain genius, and you guys will see exactly what I mean by that in a little bit. Um, but before we go through that, let's let's do a little bit of, of housekeeping here. So here's our agenda for today. Uh, we're going to go through, uh, we're going to learn a little bit about you guys. We want to learn a little bit about uh, kind of your backgrounds, that sort of thing. We're going to do an introduction to um, basically Alexandra, myself, uh, the Lumi Wealth um, community and all that sort of stuff. So we'll go through our introduction, and then we'll jump into it. Uh, we'll pass it on to Alexandra and she'll teach you guys a lot about blockchain and Ethereum and all this really cool stuff that's going on in this ecosystem and basically how you can learn uh, to, do this, to do this stuff yourself, right? Because it's very exciting and very cool stuff to do. All right, cool. So first things first, uh, let's get to know who's on this call. So uh, you guys have a chat button there on your Zoom. So if you can type into the chat, uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves, right? Uh, what's, your, what's your background? What's your occupation? Um, do you know how to code? And then how much blockchain experience do you have, right? So have you coded anything in blockchain? Have you traded at all in blockchain or, or crypto or anything like that? Uh, if you guys can type that into uh, the chat, uh, then I'm, I'll read off the chat. Okay, there we go. Got a couple coming in here. Um, so Herbert says he's a chemist. Welcome, Herbert. It's awesome. Um, I know it's going to take you guys a little bit of time to, to write this out. I can answer these questions as well. Um, my occupation is I, I run this company. I'm the CEO of Lumi Wealth, right? Do I know how to code? Yes, I do. I've been coding for over 25 years. And how much blockchain experience do I have? Um, probably about six years now. Um, I started a company back in the day that was in, in cryptocurrencies as well. So i um, been in this for a while. Okay, we got a couple people writing out here. We have Nicholas, uh, he's a computer engineer, options investor, and seller. Uh, no blockchain experience. Welcome, welcome, Nicholas. Uh, Darren says he's an accountant, coded some in the past with VBA and C++. That's great, awesome. Thank you, Darren. Vivek says he's a software engineer. He knows how to code. He's a beginner, right? Uh, Winston says he's a programmer, crypto investor. Perfect, you're definitely in the right spot. Uh, want to learn blockchain smart contracts. So do I, I'm 100% with you there, Winston. Um, Herbert says, uh, this is part two, no programming with Python. Awesome, okay, so you got a little bit of coding experience and no blockchain, great. Um, Andrew says he's an AI grad student that's traded crypto, welcome Andrew. Geronimo, there's quite a few in here, this is a lot of, a lot of chat, I'm not used to seeing this many chats come in, <laughs> it's great. Um, Geronimo, uh, so you're, says he's a trader, basic blockchain experience, great, welcome Geronimo. Uh, Syed, IT consultant, knows how to code, have only traded crypto. Great. So a lot of you guys uh, seem to have a decent amount of coding experience as well, which is great. Um, and a lot of crypto experience, of course. It makes a lot of sense. Karishma. Uh, welcome back, Karishma. Uh, business analyst, no experience in coding blockchain. 
Uh, Vito says business owner invested in ETH and ADA and a few others. I own those too, by the way. Um, I own ADA and ETH. Um, Robert says he's a developer, Python R, so it's great. Uh, Nahash, uh, electrical and computer engineer, Python scripting experience and traded crypto. Perfect, awesome. Lots of crypto experience here. Um, Kevin, uh, run a domestic, uh, domest domestis, uh, so I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, an international executive management consulting consultancy, um, no coding experience yet. <laughs> awesome. Welcome, Kevin. Well, this is a great way to get started, right? Definitely a very, uh, very hot topic to get started with, with learning how to code. Tom says he's a pilot in electronics tech, zero coding or blockchain experience. Very new, find it quite interesting. So do I. I agree with you there. Guy, welcome, Guy. Um, zero blockchain experience, wealth navigator, risk manager. Welcome back. Eduardo, uh, insurance agent to this new industry. Very cool. So, Eduardo, I guess you do insurance in, in blockchain. That's, that, that sounds very cool. Um, Joel, welcome, Joel. Seeing familiar faces here. This is great. Uh, application engineer, working a while, coding a while, traded a little crypto. Awesome. Welcome, Joel. Uh, Kwong, uh, um, here, previous uh, algo training student. Yep, welcome back, Kwong. Um, and Python, basic, uh, and blockchain, beginning investor. Great. Um, so we have we have a decent amount of people who know how to code as well. A lot of uh, Python, uh, blockchain experience, it seems, Alexandra, um, if you're looking through this as well. So you could kind of speak to that. All right. Uh, D is here, um, mortgage banking, 20 years, learning coding, some crypto trading. Great, awesome, welcome. Uh, Jason, CEO of Platinum International, uh, Inc. Plant Med Company. Oh, very cool. That sounds very interesting. No experience in crypto investor, uh, looking for ways to protect patient data for our customers. Oh, very cool. It's actually a very good application. I think that's, uh, Alexander, maybe you could even speak to that at some point. Um, I think that's a very interesting idea, Jason. Uh, Abdul, uh, developer, coding experience in Python, Java, very basic Solidity experience. Very cool. Welcome, Abdul. Uh, maybe we could take you to the next level there. Yeah. Jeff says he's a circuit designer, engineer, crypto investor, pilot, and coding experience in various languages, but no blockchain experience. Great. Um, and last uh, last few here. Uh, Vikas says, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, by the way. Um, no development experience, day trading with options and crypto. Cool. Awesome. We actually designed this course so you don't need to have a ton of programming experience. Uh, so I think for those of you guys that don't have a lot of this coding experience. Don't feel um, like this is going to be this crazy, crazy course. We've actually designed it such a way so that even if you don't know how to code, you can go through this and, and it won't be such a, a, a difficult thing for you guys to go through. All right. Um, Ronaldo, welcome back, Ronaldo. I haven't seen you for a while. Crypto investor. <laughs> Definitely. I know that. Uh, Yolanda, uh, price data analyst programming in Python or SQL. Uh, interest in working in finance as a statistician and a data analyst. Uh, have no, have no uh, can program and code. Awesome. Great. Well, welcome, guys. That was a lot. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's great to have you guys on board. Um, we have 50 people here and growing this quite, quite a large thing. Um, there's one more. Uh, Renault says crypto investor. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, Ronaldo. Cool. I'll just check in our Q&A there. Okay, awesome. So definitely lots of people on this call. call. Uh, welcome, guys. Um, definitely love how, how you guys have this interest in this stuff. And, and to be honest with you, so do I. So uh, welcome on board. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Lumi Wealth and about uh, myself and, and more importantly, even Alexandra. Uh, so I'll introduce myself quickly and Lumi Wealth, and then I'll pass on to Alexandra uh, for you to introduce yourself as well. Um, my background, so um, my name is Robert. Uh, you guys Many of you guys probably know me. Uh, I teach the algorithmic trading course. I'm also the CEO of, of Lumi Wealth. Um, I've been in tech for quite some time. Uh, I was one of those kids that learned how to code when I was like 12 years old. Did my master's in finance after that, and then went to go work on Wall Street, uh, where we started a few different companies. Um, you know, large. I worked at a large mortgage company, built out like uh, new tech for them. I think we did like 60 billion dollars of mortgages through our software that we built. Uh, and then I was also a very early stage in, um, well, investor, I guess, in some ways, but um, early stage employee, I think it's employee number four or number five uh, at an at a app that you guys probably know of uh, called Voyager. 
uh, which is basically a competitor to uh, Coinbase. Uh, so started that company. Um, basically, when I was there, it was just us and a whiteboard, nothing else. Um, spent some time, uh, you know, actually built the initial version of the iPhone app, although we hired a, an iPhone developer that was much better than me. <laughs> and he took over from there. Um, but yeah, so basically built out Voyager from scratch. Um, kind of the rest is history. That company is now quite large. Um, I believe uh, we're the official cryptocurrency brokerage for the D Dallas Mavericks now. It was pretty cool. Um, and I think uh, worth about $3 billion on the stock market, which is also very cool. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's kind of my background there. Obviously now working on LumiWealth. Uh, so what is LumiWealth? Uh, really, we're a company that's focused on helping people um, use technology to make, get to improve their investment returns, essentially, right? So we do that obviously through our algorithmic trading courses, which you guys probably know of. We have our machine learning for trading. We have our options trading courses. We have lots of different ways that we can use technology to, to really uh, improve what you're doing in terms of investing. And now here's the next step in that, um, you know, you can't, you can't work in finance these days without paying attention to blockchain. It's pretty much impossible to ignore. Um, and I think for very good reason, there's a lot of value happening here uh, beyond just, you know, people buying monkeys online and NFTs and making a killing. Uh, there's actually a lot of real value behind this. Um, so without further ado, I'll, I'll, I'll let uh, Alexandra introduce herself. Blockchain genius, uh, I'll, I'll start off that way. Um, but Alexandra, do you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you for all your comments. Very interesting to hear the demographic. We'll definitely tailor the course to the students in it, so we need to know who you are. My name is Alexandra Kropova, and I'm a teacher and developer as well. I've been teaching since 2015, and I have taught thousands of students on blockchain about Ethereum blockchain, as well as Cardano blockchain, of course, Bitcoin blockchain, blockchain machine learning, and now here's our next iteration with LumiWealth Blockchain Programming. I'm very excited to take you all through this course and to join LumiWealth as well. I'm new to LumiWealth, but I'm excited to join you. I've taught tons of financial courses as well uh, to my parent company, Mammoth Interactive. And we're very excited to partner with LumiWealth. And I see we've gotten a few more comments. We have Robert who says he's a Voyager customer. Huh. Eric had a press conference with Cuban and the Mavs. Yeah, yeah. Steve Ehrlich, like, he's the CEO of Voyager. Um, really nice guy too. Um, great person to work with. Um, but yeah, so they, they did have a press conference with the Mavericks. The stock price shot up quite a bit after that one too. This is great. Cool. Thanks, Robert. And thanks for being a customer of Voyager too, by the way, <laughs> as a shareholder here, you know. Um, cool. Awesome. Okay. So that's, uh, so that's Alexander. Thank you very much for that. That's great. Um, I'm, I'm going to cover a few more things here really quickly before uh, we move on. I'll, I'll, I'll give it back to you, Alexandra, so you can talk about all the stuff that people really want to hear about. But before we want to get to that, um, I want to share with you guys our YouTube channel. Like I said earlier, uh, but also for those of you that are joining a little later, um, here's our YouTube channel. Uh, you could check it out. It's uh, youtube.com slash Wealth. Make sure you go there, subscribe to us, like and subscribe, hit that, uh, that bell as well to get notified because we do a lot of stuff like this. Uh, if you like this presentation, you're going to like a lot of the other stuff that we do. We have a lot of free things that go out there. So make sure that you uh, subscribe to us as well on our YouTube because we're going to get a lot of stuff there. Uh, also, this is where you, where you will be able to find the recording to this. You can see here it's streaming live already on YouTube. But if you click into this after we are done, this is going to become, uh, it's going to change from a live video to a recorded video. So you'll be able to get the whole recording here on our YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, so that's the first, uh, first thing. The next thing I want to uh, tell you guys about is our Discord. This is really important. I'm, I'm putting these links, by the way, into the chat for you guys to have access to. Um, so this is our Discord, which is essentially our chat here. Um, a lot of you guys will actually know this because you've been part of our Discord for a while. I recognize a lot of these familiar faces here. Um, but here is, uh, is a really great place for you to interact with the community. Uh, you'll get to know uh, past and future students. You'll get to know people that have similar interests to you. Our crypto channel is very, very active, right? We have lots of people talking about building bots here and uh, lots of people talking about crypto here. Uh, and I suspect after uh, the next few weeks, we're going to have lots of people that are blockchain developers on here as well. So this is a great way for you to get to know people in the community. Um, ask people about, you know, what their experience has been and, you know, 
you know, be part of the conversation, right? It's, uh, it's definitely fun having uh, more people part of our, part of the group, you know? Um, so that's the Discord. Uh, we're also having a survey at the end of the webinar. So just as a reminder, please fill out that survey. It helps us do better as a company. Um, and then also, uh, please don't feel like you have to wait until the end to ask questions. We have quite a few people here, um, but uh, you know, by all means, make sure that you ask questions throughout. Uh, we wanna make this a little bit more interactive so that, um, you know, don't wait until the end to, to ask the questions. It's nice when this is like an interactive type of presentation, right? Okay, cool. Um, so that's pretty much it for the introduction here. Uh, I'm gonna pass it off to uh, Alexandra and let you uh, take it away. Thank you so much, Rob. And I'll be sure to keep an eye on the comp. Starting off, we're going to talk about why we should learn blockchain. I hope everyone is as excited as I am and Rob as well. It's very exciting to learn blockchain. We're going to build a ton of cool and cutting edge projects in the masterclass. And today we're just going to do an overview of these topics, why we should get excited about them, starting with blockchain. You've likely heard you can't get out of the news that blockchain is here and it's changing the world. You've likely heard of cryptocurrencies as we chat. Lots of you guys have already traded cryptocurrencies, invested. Maybe you're working in the cryptocurrency field a little bit, or you're just really curious because you can't seem to escape seeing it on the news. Well, blockchain began in 2008 with the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. And since then, we've had tons of other cryptocurrencies. If you don't know, a cryptocurrency is a virtual currency. And don't worry if you don't understand all of the topics covered today, because in the masterclass, we're going to go step by step explaining all the terms that you need to know about a blockchain, um, what is a miner to what is an NFT. And then we'll get into actually building out the projects. So a cryptocurrency is a virtual currency. It is a way that you can send money without using not like the US dollar, Canadian dollar, the euro, instead using a crypto. As well, blockchain is changing the world. NFTs, these are known as non-fungible tokens. They are a way to represent a digital asset. And you've likely seen this already. Lots of celebrities are building NFTs. For example, lots of sneaker companies like Nike, they're building NFTs to represent their own sneaker. We have NFT games, like if you've heard of Crypto Kitties, and NFTs are becoming an opportunity as well, because NFTs started off really in the basement, and same with cryptocurrencies, actually. A lot of this technology, a lot of people didn't understand or believe in it, especially back in 2008, but today, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, they're starting to be more mainstream. People are accepting them, people are investing in them, and NFTs are being sold for, well, millions of dollars now. As well, blockchain is changing entertainment like games. There's lots of blockchain-based games where you can actually connect your game to the blockchain or you can purchase game items with cryptocurrencies. That's another example of how blockchain is changing the world. Across all other industries, as we've heard from one of our commenters, I remember one of our commenters wanted to protect their data. Blockchain is definitely going to help protect customer data, patient data, because the blockchain is... store data in the mainstream. And we've seen that lots of people, hospitals get hacked, but with the blockchain, it will definitely help reduce the number of hacks and make your data storage more secure. So that's another application of blockchain. So blockchain is not just a term on the news, it actually affects lots of industries and can change industries. I believe it will change all of our industries eventually once we get to that point. As well, it affects the web development industry building web applications. You can actually now build what are known as decentralized applications, which are built differently. They utilize blockchain technology to actually work. So it's a different way of having a website. or Web 3.0, the next iteration of the actual internet, that's also another way that blockchain is changing the world. Back in the 80s, we had Web 1.0, which was just static web pages that few maybe nerds went on, not many people edited them. And then we had eventually Web 2.0, which is where we are now. Web 2.0 is where you have social media, you have almost everyone using the web. And then 
now already beginning and eventually we will transition completely to web 3.0 which actually uses blockchain technology decentralized technology decentralized meaning you don't have a central party controlling your process you instead have a decentralized process and that is known as web 3.0 this has already been created and it's going to slowly and slowly over the web until web 2.0 transitions to web 3.0. So that's another way blockchain is changing the world. It's actually changing the whole web. There's also tons of companies working in blockchain, whether they've just started themselves to be specifically for blockchain, building blockchain applications or giving advice on how to invest in blockchain. Even big banks are already using different streams to specifically give investing advice on blockchain and cryptocurrency. So blockchain has gone from being just a little known technology to now being quite established by major companies and lots of people. And finally, we have transactions on our list. Blockchain will change how we perform transactions, whether that is a big loan for a car or a house, it will change how we buy that house. And to minor transactions as well, like buying something with your credit card and paying all those fees. So blockchain is of the internet. That's the most exciting part, in my opinion, Web 3.0. But of course, there's tons of other industries and everyone will have their own stream of what they love most about blockchain because it affects so many different industries. And I've also seen in our comments, we have lots of investors and our masterclass will help you make better investments whether that is in blockchain itself or in other industries, because blockchain does affect other industries. And we'll talk about how to better invest in cryptocurrencies and how you can understand what you should actually be investing in, because you also should be aware of scams in this new field. So you have to be aware of what you're actually investing in. And if you do want a job in the blockchain field, our masterclass will also help you because there's tons of new companies starting, or you could build your own projects, like decentralized projects, or you could also become a blockchain specialist where you will help a company transition to web 3.0, or you'll help them implement blockchain technology or decentralized technology is out there. It's very exciting. Those are just a few reasons say to learn let's move Perfect. I'm going to change the slide our next topic will be what are bitcoin and ethereum blockchains so the first blockchain was known as the bitcoin blockchain began back in 2008 with satoshi nakamoto's white paper satoshi nakamoto is actually unknown we actually don't know exactly who created the first blockchain they published it anonymously back in 2008 and you can actually still read the white paper if you would like to see the first blockchain and how it was theorized and then implemented but actually the theory for a blockchain was theorized back in the 90s even and then it was officially created in 2008. so first let's talk about what is a blockchain in general because maybe you've heard of it and you may understand a little bit but what is it exactly so, so if you're going to remember of... anything from today, you should remember just one thing about the blockchain. The number one property of a blockchain is to establish trust between parties or people without intermediaries or party. For example, if I want to get a loan to make a big purchase, like a house or a car, I likely will need some kind of third party. Maybe if I go to the car dealer, I'll have to sign a contract and I'll have a third party. If I want to get a house, I'll have to go to the notary, go to a lawyer, have my bank as well, establish some kind of trust when I want to make that purchase. But if you use blockchain to make a purchase, then you don't actually need those third parties. You can make a transaction much faster and securely and openly with that trust established without needing all those intermediaries. So that's the number one most important property for a beginner to understand about a blockchain. Then I have a complicated, complex definition here that a blockchain is a timestamp series of immutable transactions. We'll get more into the nitty gritty during the masterclass, but to picture a blockchain for a beginner, just imagine 
the name itself, a chain of blocks. And you could just have a block and then a chain connecting all these blocks together. That really is what a blockchain is. In this case, the name really does define what it is. Now this block, this chain of blocks is not actually a physical chain of blocks. It's virtual, it's made of code. But if you want to visualize the data structure, how it's structured, then you can visualize this chain of blocks. And each of these blocks contains data. So again, if you want to store patient data, you could store it on one of the blocks in the chain. Or if you want to store data about a transaction, like did I actually pay my internet bill this month? I could store that on the blockchain. And if anyone tries to question me, I can say, no, look at the chain. You can see right there that I actually did make the purchase because it's on the chain. So this chain of blocks, it cannot be broken. And that is why it's so secure because you can't break the chain. You can't undo a contract. You can't undo a transaction. If I put something on the blockchain, it's there permanently. And anyone can see it, which makes it open, which makes it trustworthy. They can't see your actual patient data. They can't see your social security number or anything, but they can see that you did make the transaction that you said you made. So that's why you don't need a third party because a lawyer or to a bank to have some kind of trust established that you are you're, you actually can make this purchase. Instead, you use the blockchain as your third party. Your blo the blockchain is your intermediary. So anytime you're confused about the blockchain, just think of the name itself. It's a chain of blocks containing the data. And there's a lot more technology that we'll talk about behind that during the masterclass, but that is the basics. And there's lots of properties about the blockchain that make it so important, like its data security. Because today, so many people are hacked all the time. Hospitals, you and me, identity theft, tons of scary hacks happen. And the blockchain makes hacking a lot harder to do. So that's why blockchain is used so much in finance. And that's why we're transitioning to Web 3.0, because the web is so vulnerable to hacks. Whereas Web 3.0 will use decentralized technology to be more secure. And there are tons of other benefits as well. Secu a big one. Now, as mentioned, blockchain began with the Bitcoin blockchain back in 2008. And then tons of blockchains have actually been created since then, like Ethereum blockchain, Cardano blockchain, and more. You can even build your own blockchain if you want to. There's actually tons of open source projects that you can clone if you want to make your own blockchain. We're not going to do that in this masterclass, but you could use the skills that you learn in the masterclass to create your own blockchain if you want to. In the masterclass, we're going to focus on the Ethereum blockchain, which began in 2015. And this blockchain is specifically designed to help developers build applications focused around transferring value. And you can do that with the help of what are known as smart contracts, which we'll talk about. So let's to our next, now that we know what a blockchain is, let's talk how you can actually build contracts and code for the blockchain. All right, so Alexander, I want to stop you for one second here. Uh, we got a couple questions in the chat. All right, so uh, Yolanda asks, uh, says, um, I'm actively seeking employment as a data science and system specialist or analyst. Uh, we'll be learning, will learning blockchain help me gain an advantage in my skill sets? Yes, learning blockchain will help you as a data scientist and a systems analyst. The blockchain is used to store data. There's even specifically blockchains just for storing data. And eventually there's a lot of transition happening where more and more data is being stored with decentralized technology. So understanding how to work with the blockchain, it, I think it'll be inevitable eventually as a data scientist because blockchain technology will come to use in whatever company you're working at, or if you're a contractor, you'll have to use blockchain technology as more data gets stored with blockchain technology instead of our typically traditional ways of storing data that we have now. Great. Cool. Thank you for that. So that's a great answer, Alexandra. Uh, we have another question here. So um, Nicholas asks, where is the data stored? question, Nicholas. The data is stored in a network of nodes. 
And you could actually be part of this network if you wanted to. Because as mentioned on the blockchain, there is no central party. For example, at a bank, the central party is the bank. But in a blockchain technology, there is no central entity controlling everything. Instead, it's actually a computers all over the world that store the data themselves. And you could actually join this network if you wanted to. You just have to connect your computer to the blockchain network and you could be part of this network. And it's computers all over the world that are connected to the network and they store the data. And if one computer leaves, the data is still stored on other computers part of the network. Cool, great, thank you. It's definitely a good description of that. Uh, Guy asks, what if we want our purchases to be private? Yes. So your purchases can be private. When, when you make a purchase and your purchase gets permanently logged in the chain, it doesn't show your name. It just shows your address, which is your wallet address. And you could have as many wallet addresses as you wanted to. And it will say your address, which is just a long string. And it could be any string of just characters and numbers. And so it doesn't show your name. It doesn't show your private information. It just shows this address. And if you wanted to, you could have as many addresses as you wanted, a new address for each purchase. Okay, hey, perfect. Those, and those addresses can be basically anonymous, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Thank you. Um, and then Yolanda wrote, um, that is awesome because I'm currently learning some basics in blockchain and artificial intelligence now. That's great. So as a follow-up to that, to the question that you answered earlier. Thanks, Yolanda. Uh, and then Mel asks, um, I guess the question is mining. Um, I think, I think um, uh, Mel, you wrote this while, uh, Alexandra, I think you were describing um, how the nodes are, how, how everyone has a different node and how it's not centralized. I believe uh, the question was, is this what mining is? It's like, Yes, that is mining because whenever a, a transaction or anything is put onto the blockchain, it doesn't just get put automatically. It actually gets put into a waiting list. And then you have all of these members or nodes. It could be you and me if we were part of we could our computer to the network. We all have to make sure that we find this specific algorithm to then allow the next person in the wait list to be added to the chain. And mining is part of that. Cool, well, awesome. Thanks, Alexandra. Great, I think, I think that's all the questions for now. Okay, great. Next up then we'll go into Solidity Smart Contracts. Okay, first we'll talk about contract. A contract is just an agreement. So the reason we're talking about this is because we're actually going to be building these Solidity smart contracts in the master class. And this is what you have to build if you want to do some kind of action or build some kind of software for the blockchain. So a contract is just an agreement in the regular sense of the name contract. If I want to buy an apartment, I have to sign a contract and have the other parties sign as well. I'm agreeing that I'll give the money to buy that big purchase and they're agreeing that they'll actually transfer the estate to me. So it's just a transfer and you have that written agreement. And a smart contract is an agreement, but it's smart because it's written with code. So instead of being written on paper and having signature date, instead a contract is written in code. And if you do have programming experience, it's similar to a class, because I know some of the commenters said they did have experience. Now, once you put a contract onto the blockchain, you cannot take it back. You could make a new contract, yes, with modifications, but once you deploy something and put it on that chain, remember that chain cannot break. So contracts are permanent. And that's also part of what makes them so trustworthy because I can't make a contract and then quickly take it back unless I do some high level advanced hacking, which is very hard to do. So if I make a smart contract, it's very hard to take it back. So that's why it's trustworthy for these huge purchases that can be made via the blockchain. And that's just an example of a purchase. A contract is not just for purchases. It could be for any type of event. It could be for some kind of action that you want to happen on a website or it could be some kind of data you want to store. A contract doesn't have to be for transactions, but that is the initial use for them. And the most popular use is for a transaction. 
some examples of what a contract is, is for example, for a new token. Like if you wanted to make your own Bitcoin, you can make a contract for that coin. So you can make a contract for that cryptocurrency if you wanted to make your own. You can make your own contract for an NFT as well. Another example is you could build a contract for a crowdfunding campaign where you're trying to get some kind of funding and you can accept cryptocurrency and you can build this contract that states, I have this campaign, I can accept currency. Whenever someone sends me currency, I'll accept it. I'll put it into this wallet. So a contract just tells you the properties and behaviors that you want to happen. Another example is you could write a contract for a lottery. You could write a contract to accept a loan or even a bank or any kind of financial instrument, but not just financial instruments. You could also have a contract for voting. You could write a contract that says, I'm having a vote for this topic. I'm going to accept votes, one vote per address. And every time someone votes, I'm going to make sure I store that. And then at the end, once the time is up, once the the results of the vote. So that's another example of a contract. You could write a contract to get votes. And Solidity is the final part of this Solidity smart contracts. Solidity is a coding language and it is the coding language holding these contracts because remember a smart contract is just an, a contract written in code. So Solidity is the coding language for writing these smart contracts specifically for the Ethereum there are other coding languages for other blockchains if you want to write smart for other blockchains, not just Ethereum. And if you know one language, it's very easy to transition and learn another language. So Solidity is a great place to start. Many people are already building smart contracts for Solidity. So you can check out tons of open source projects. You can see tons of contracts already on the blockchain already being used. There are already games and websites and financial instruments that were built with Solidity. So a lot of these contracts already exist. And it's very easy to get started. You can actually build contracts online at remix.ethereum.org. So you don't even need a code editor. You can just go to that website and start building contracts. So it's very easy to get started. Of course, if you want to build more complicated projects, you'll have to go offline. But if you want to get started, you can do so at remix.ethereum.org. Do some online. And that is it for smart contracts. Cool. Yes. Next up, we have one more topic for this webinar. Now we'll have a lot more topics in the master class but these are the main topics for the webinar. We're going to talk about cryptocurrencies and NFTs. So we already talked a little bit about cryptos and NFTs, and we'll, we're going to go a bit deeper now. And I do see we have one question before we jump into that. How safe are smart contracts in comparison to BC? Smart contracts are safe because they are immutable. So once you put them on the chain, you can't take them back and you can't fake one either. You can't say that you made a smart contract because you can go check the blockchain. And if you did not make the contract, then whoever is interested in the contract, they could say, actually, you didn't make the contract. I don't see it on the blockchain. So in that way, they are safe and trustworthy. Now, of course, there is hacking hacking on a blockchain is very low compared to the hacking on something like the regular web or something like a bank because it uses this centralized blockchain technology. I also see we have, is the use of Solana similar to Ethereum? If it is, can it be applied to also make contracts there? I believe Solana is another format for writing smart contracts. So yes, smart contracts are not just in Solidity and Ethereum, you can write contracts for other blockchains as well. So we're going to specifically do the smart contracts in Solidity for the Ethereum blockchain, but you can take your class and apply it to other blockchains. 
Now, uh, some of them are different, but in general, if you have the fundamental skills, you can transition to another blockchain. We're also getting another question by Karishma. Would we learn more in-depth basics of proof of work and proof of stake mechanisms in the class two? Also the various token types, especially the technical aspects of them. Okay, that's a bit of a double question. And proof of stake, these are ways that the blockchain is made secure. These are ways that the data is encrypted and the smart contracts are validated before they get added to the chain. Because whoever's part of the network, they don't want to just put anything onto the chain and they don't want to just throw it on there blatantly. It has to first be validated and it has to be encrypted and then it can be added to the chain. So yes, we will talk about these mechanisms. These are different ways that items get added And then part two, yes, we built about different token types, such as the different standards like ERC-20, ERC-721. These are all different standards for building tokens. Yes, we will cover them and the technical aspects and how to build them from scratch and also from templates and from libraries. Okay, now that we answer all the questions, let's go what are cryptocurrencies and NFTs? So we talked a little bit about this already. A crypto is a virtual currency. So instead of buying something with a dollar bill or with your credit card, you buy it with a cryptocurrency. And they're secured by cryptography, which is why they're called cryptocurrency. And the point of a crypto, you might think crypto is just another dollar. What's the point of having another money? A crypto is hard to counterfeit a to double spend a crypto. So that makes it a lot more secure than just using your credit card or using a dollar bill or using a bank. And some examples, Bitcoin, Ether, ADA, and so many other cryptos that have been created. And if you want to, you can create your own crypto. In the masterclass, we will talk about how to create your own coin. And to answer this question, we're going to talk about the token type of standard coin, if you wanted to create your own coin, like the Bitcoin, you have to follow a standard so that your coin is accepted on different exchanges, different trading platforms. All right, next, we are going to talk about NFTs. So an NFT stands for non-fungible token. So it is a token that is non-fungible. Let's first talk about crypto versus token because crypto is also a token. But the two, although they're both tokens, they are different types of tokens. And we will talk about this more in depth in the master class. And we're going to build these different types of tokens. Crypto versus a token is like having money versus having a voucher for redeeming something. So you could go to the store and buy a computer with money, or you could buy it with a gift card. And so that is a bit of a metaphor and analogy for a crypto versus a token. Cryptocurrencies have their own blockchain. For example, the Ether cryptocurrency has the Ethereum blockchain. The Bitcoin cryptocurrency has the Bitcoin blockchain. The ADA cryptocurrency has the Cardano blockchain. Crypto tokens, however, are built on top of an existing blockchain, and they're not just for redeeming something. They can also represent an asset. For example, you may have heard of CryptoKitties, which is a popular game where a token actually represents a game avatar or a character. And a token can represent an asset, like it can represent real estate, or it can represent a shoe, or it can represent a piece of artwork. An NFT is a collectible unique asset. So it is a token. It's not a crypto. You may have seen tons of NFTs already out there. Celebrities are using NFTs a lot, a lot as a marketing scheme and a lot as a money-making scheme because people buy an NFT, then they resell it. But beyond that, NFTs can be used in entertainment, like in a game. They can be used to also represent assets. So they go beyond just an investing standpoint, but they are being used a lot for investing and marketing. 
All right, and that is an overview of beginner topics of the master class. And we will cover a lot more topics in depth and the technical aspects and do a lot of coding in our master class. So I'm excited to take you all through it in January. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Alexandra. That was a great, great description there. You definitely got me excited, that's for sure. Uh, I'm actually going to be in this class as well, and I can't wait to learn how to build some of these things. Uh, awesome. So we got, a, we got a question here. Um, so Robert says, uh, I have uh, the NFT of the Mona Lisa, as he says. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Good. Yeah, just de definitely a lot of things are being NFT these days. You know? And it's actually pretty amazing all the things are happening. Cool. Okay. So uh, feel free to keep asking your questions, guys, as you're going through this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're also going to take you through the course itself. So you learn a little bit of, uh, about uh, what this course actually entails. Um, you know, what the curriculum is and that sort of stuff. Uh, so I'm going to walk you guys through the course as well here. All right. And let me actually, um, I'm going to give, uh, put this into the chat. I put, uh, I put this link to the chat, but if you guys want to go from a website, you could also go courses and it's, it's in the list of courses now down here in, uh, as blockchain programming. Um, so in the chat here, uh, Yolanda says, I'm looking forward to learning about cryptocurrency and a blockchain. Me too. Absolutely. Definitely agree with you on that. Cool. Okay. So here's the blockchain programming course. Uh, we basically, we have three plans for this course. Um, the first plan is not yet available because we haven't done this yet, but normally we'll also, uh, as you guys have seen with our other courses, there's a self-directed plan where basically you can just watch the recordings of the classes, right? Um, this will not be available until after the course itself because we need to record them first, right? Uh, but typically in a self-directed plan, you'll be able to watch the recordings, you'll get access to all the slides and the code, uh, you'll be able to ask questions on Discord, all that sort of stuff as well, right? That's a self-directed plan. It's, it's really about the course recordings, right? Uh, which is different from our most popular plan by far. It's our live classes plan. And this is basically, uh, you get to sit on a live class, kind of like this with Alexandra, right? You'll ask questions throughout. Um, I know I'll be asking questions, that's for sure. Um, and it's a, definitely a great way to learn because not only are you watching this content, but you know, you're, you're paced. You know, we, we have a lot of students that do both, right? I've always found the students that do the live classes actually do a lot better. Um, and it makes sense because it's, it's kind of a paced class. You have to show up once a week. Uh, there's usually homework involved, things like that. Right? So you actually um, find yourself uh, working a bit harder in a live class right? Uh, and actually learning this material. And then also you get to sit on, on this class itself with not just Alexandra, who you can ask questions to live while she's teaching it, right? but also the other people that are in the class as well. You know, I think uh, not only do you learn a lot from the instructor, but I think you learn a lot from the community as well. Uh, here at Lumi Wealth, and we've we've really been working on building that community as much as possible. Um, so you know, while Alexander's teaching this stuff, just like you are right now in this webinar, you'll be able to ask questions. You know, I'm confused about something. Can you clarify? Or if there's something you're stuck on, you can you can go through all that sort of stuff with her or with anyone else in the class for that matter as well. You get to see kind of the questions that they have and have that communication and that sort of thing happening too. Right. So that's a live class, right? Definitely our most popular classes by far. Um, where you actually sit down in the class and then learn this stuff live. When you're in this class, by the way, you also get access to everything in the self-directed plan. So you get access to the course recordings afterwards. So it's not just you take the class live and then, you know, you don't get to watch them afterwards. You'll have a lifetime access to the recordings, right? And then also uh, what we do with, uh, with our classes as well is we allow people if, uh, you know, life happens, things, things happen. If you need to switch from one live class to the next, right? So say you're doing this in January and, God forbid something happens with work or whatever, um, you're more than welcome to take the next one that's starting. Uh, we don't have a date up there yet, but we'll probably, I'm assuming, and we'll, we'll discuss this with Alexandra afterwards. Um, I'm assuming probably around like a March type date, um, but we'll confirm all that sort of stuff. So live classes definitely has a huge benefit to it in that you're actually part of this class live and you get to ask those questions um, and get to know other people in the class as well. All right. Uh, then our third and final plan is our project help and tutoring plan. Uh, this is basically like our, our white glove service, right? This gives you everything for the from the previous plans and and, and up. So you get those, uh, you get the recordings, 
you get to be part of the live classes, right? So still interact with all the students, be part, part of the live classes. Uh, you'll get access to slides and the code. But then on top of that, you also get uh, a lot of additional time uh, from Alexandra. So if you want to ask her any specific questions, do one-on-one -on -one time. Um, you know, even uh, what, what we do at Louis Wealth here, if you need some help with development, sometimes we can even help you out with that as well, right? So um, really, it's a white glove service. You get a lot more out of it um, than just uh, attending a live class. You really get to see, um, you really get that extra help um, if that's what you're looking for, right? So those are our three plans. Uh, you could read more about them here. Uh, basically, our self-directed plan is about 950 bucks. Um, our live class is about 3500 and our uh, project help and tutoring is about 5,300. Um, all of these have payment plans on them. So after you add to the cart, uh, you could actually go ahead and change that to be a payment plan. Uh, you could do pay up front, or you could pay uh, in three months or five months in increment, three months or five months increments, right? So if you wanna split that payment up, don't feel like you have to pay that all up front, right? Uh, and we are also running a Black Friday special right now, up until I believe the November 25th, so 10 days uh, where you guys will save 25% as well. So if you guys are looking to buy these things uh, and save a little bit of money, the Black Friday special is definitely the way to go. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, then you could also go through here. Um, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys to, to scroll through and, and read a little bit. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff here on why blockchain and what is crypto as an NFT. Uh, there's lots of information like that on the internet too, but just to let you guys know a bit here. And then we have the course curriculum, right? Um, so I'll pass it on to uh, Alexandra, who can walk you through this a lot better. Uh, but before that, I, I do see that we have a couple questions here. So I think we should answer those first. Um, so Alexandra, this is uh, a question for you. Uh, Clinton asks, why are coins slash tokens that are used to exchange value on a blockchain used as a means to speculate as investments? Well, a lot of people they do use cryptocurrency as a way to just invest in something. For example, Bitcoin started at just a fraction of a dollar in value and then it has risen up in price quite a lot. So a lot of people use these coins and tokens like an NFT as a way to invest, as a way to buy and then resell at a later date for a higher price. Great, thank you. Um, so a question uh, here is, uh, Andrew is asking, um, during this class, the video was skipping a lot, buffering, any tips on how to prevent this? Well, we will record everything. So if it does skip during your live session, you can watch the recording where it won't skip because you will have the recorded version. Okay, great, perfect. Um, and then uh, I think we could figure out some, some uh, things with the internet as well. Uh, maybe try to improve on that. Um, uh, to make sure that the video doesn't skip while, while we're doing the recordings. Um, I want to uh, also give you guys the Black Friday code. So Joel's asking for the code for Black Friday. I'm going to put that into the chat here. The code for Black Friday is this. All right, there you go. So that's a Black Friday code. Uh, <clears throat> there's also um, a question of the middle option for uh, select options uh, isn't working. Um, that's a little bug on our website, we'll fix that. But basically whenever, when you click on that, uh, it's supposed to zoom you down to here. And this also answers another one of your questions. Uh, what is the timing of the live classes? Um, if that button's not working for you, um, I'll work on fixing that after this discussion. Uh, but basically it will just take you down here. And over here, you'll see uh, basically all the dates and times for the course, right? We have uh, registration closing on December 23rd, so right before Christmas time. Uh, the course itself is gonna start on January 6th. So right, uh, pretty much right after you guys come back from vacation and, uh, and all that from New Year's, it's, I think it's a perfect time to actually start learning. Uh, so January 6th is when it starts. It goes for eight weeks, right? So uh, one, one lecture per week for eight weeks straight, right? Um, we recommend eight to 12 hours of, of learning and to, to get through this course. Uh, and then this course itself is going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern time or 5 p.m. Pacific every Thursday, right? So Thursday, January 6th is the first date at 8 p.m. Eastern or 5 p.m. Pacific. I know, Alexandra, you're out on the West Coast. So for you, it's the 5 p.m., right? And a couple of you, uh, other guys are uh, 
on the West Coast as well. So 5 p.m. Pacific or 5 p.m. or 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and then this is also going to be about two hours per week, um, I think, give or take, because it depends on the questions and things like that. Uh, but about two hours per week, and it's going to be live over Zoom, um, just like this, where you'll be able to ask uh, Alexander questions and all that sort of thing as well. All right. Okay, cool. So uh, I sent you guys a Black Friday code. Uh, I'm just going to go through, um, answer the timing of the classes. Uh, basically, if you guys go through this website, I'll, I'll give you guys the, the website again, right here. So you guys can go through it um, and you can actually read through all the different things on the, on the website. Um, let's read through questions here. Uh, middle option. Okay, thanks. Uh, D asks, can we take advantage of a Black Friday sale and do the payment plan at the same time? Yes, you can. You can use the Black Friday coupon, and also you get you could use the payment plan. It just happens at checkout, right? So when you're going through checkout, you'll be able to actually uh, select that payment plan. Um, so if I go through this here, for example, we'll add to cart, right? I'll show you guys exactly how this works. I have a bunch of other stuff in my cart that I got to get rid of. So let's say here. By the way, if you buy more than one course at a time, you actually get a discount as well. So you get a 10% discount if you buy more than one course at a time. What you do is you take that Black Friday code, you type it in here, apply the coupon, right? You see a savings show up there. There you go. And then go to proceed to checkout. And on this page, you'll see that you have payment plans, right? So you could pay full amount, right? If you wanna just pay it up front, right? Or you could pay uh, with the payment plans and pick the three or five month, right? So that's basically how you're gonna go through there. So yes, the um, the Black Friday code does work uh, in conjunction with the um, the payment plans, All right? Um, also, I'm gonna take a look at this Q and A here. Uh, there's two more questions in there. Um, Ronaldo asks, "Will we learn how to mine crypto?" We will talk about mining. We won't be specifically how to. But we will talk about what is mining and how you could become a miner. I remember back when I had a, a mining device, it was very noisy. It sat on my balcony. I had to get rid of it because it was so loud. Mm -hmm. But we will talk about how to mine. All right, awesome. Thank you. And then uh, another question from Ronaldo. Uh, will you accept Bitcoin for payment? <laughs> um, you know what? We're, we're actually working on that. I would like to start accepting Bitcoin for payment sometime soon. Uh, we just have to make sure that our payment provider can actually handle it. Um, but it is definitely something that's on a roadmap and we definitely do want to accept Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, whatever you guys want to pay, uh, definitely want to accept um, all those different currencies going forward. We just have to set it up. Like I said, it's, you know, there's, there's some technical things involved here. All right. Okay. And there's another question. Uh, PayPal accept, accepts BTC, says George. Thank you. Um, and we do actually, I think we support PayPal. So maybe by that token, we do actually accept cryptocurrencies. I'm just not aware of it yet. <laughs> um, but believe me, it's definitely something that we're, we're planning on doing uh, is, is setting that up as well. Actually, we don't accept PayPal right now. So maybe we don't. Um, I will add that in. If you guys ask me about it a bit more, I'll, I'll, I'll put that higher up in the priorities. You know? Cool. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to this course now back to blockchain programming. And I'll let Alexandra tell you a little bit about the curriculum as well. So I'm going to scroll down here to the curriculum. Uh, and Alexandra, I'll let you uh, take it away. Yes, I'd be happy to do an overview. So we've written out actually what we will cover in each of our weeks and the projects that we'll build each week. We're going to start off by introducing everyone in the course because the great part of this course is that you guys can make a lot of friends, potential business partners, project partners, and talk to each other and collaborate. It's very fun. We'll also do an introduction to some of the core topics of blockchain solidity and smart contracts, kind of like we did today, but more technical and a lot more detailed. We'll talk about how you can get started with coding on the Ethereum Remix integrated development environment, which is the online code editor. So we'll talk about how you can start coding and we'll start writing some solidity code right away because we're going to focus on practical projects not much theory unless it's required. The majority focus of the course is to write code and build some fun projects. 
So in week two, we'll cover some fundamentals of coding. So if you've never coded before, then that's totally fine because we'll cover some of the fundamentals that you need to know if you want to build projects with code, build smart contracts. If you do know how to code, you should still watch week two because Solidity is a bit different. It does handle some things differently that can really confuse you if you don't know Solidity. So it's tempting to just jump in and start writing Solidity, but then you can get easily confused. So that's why we cover some of the Solidity fundamentals and exactly how Solidity works. Then week three, we'll start building some smart contracts, learning how to send coin, how to send ether, building contracts like for storing data, like could be any kind of data, patient data, student database. We'll talk about how to build a contract to split profits. So we'll actually build all these contracts and then deploy them and actually see how we can test them out and build another contract where you limit addresses. So these are just some examples of contracts that we'll build. Then we'll go on to week four. We're going to cover inheritance. This is a huge programming topic, inheritance in object-oriented programming. So we'll cover how to build contracts with inheritance. We'll cover all these programming topics in project-based ways. So instead of just covering the theory of what is inheritance, we're going to actually show you some examples of how it would work in an actual contract. And we'll also talk about some modifiers which are related to inheritance. Then week five, we're going to build some more complex contracts using other programming topics like abstraction. So we're going to start off with simple programming topics and slowly ramp up the difficulty as we go along. So you'll go from maybe not knowing how to code at all to understanding how to use code, code terminology, how to build actual projects. So we'll talk about some contracts like a bank contract, using a contract with a library, how to limit time, and of course, there's a million contracts you could build, but we're going to focus on some great projects that are very hands-on and that you can easily see results. Then finally, part three, we're going to build some tokens. So we're going to first talk about how to build an NFT token. We'll also talk about how to build a crypto token. So we'll cover the ERC-20 and the ERC-721 standard, and we'll build out these token contracts. So as you'll see throughout the whole project, we're building smart contracts for different purposes, like for a bank or for a coin or for an NFT. We'll also deploy the token. So we're going to actually deploy it on a public test net. So that is a test blockchain. And you can easily just change it to use a real blockchain. The reason we're using a test blockchain is so that you actually don't have to spend your real crypto. You can spend some dummy crypto, which is fake, but it covers all the same steps. And we'll validate it on OpenSea, which is the number one trading platform for NFTs. Then finally, in week eight, we're actually going to be offline completely. So we'll start off online coding. Then we'll go offline and actually use an offline code editor, use your terminal. And we're going to use what are known as Truffle and Ganache. Truffle is a huge tool that's very commonly used for building more complex projects like a decentralized web app or just other smart contracts that are larger that you need to manage with Truffle. And we'll talk about Ganache as well. And where you can go from here, what you can do after you finish the course, more projects that you can build that you could deploy to an actual public net and potential courses you could take after. Great, awesome. Thanks for the description, Alexandra. That's, that's awesome. Very exciting stuff to learn. So by the end of this, basically they'll know um, and, and actually, there's a question in here, too, is, uh, you know, do you have to be a programmer uh, programming for many years? Uh, so to answer your question, Mel, um, we've designed this course in such a way they don't need to know any co coding experience at all before you get started. Right? So even if you've never coded a day in your life, you'll be able to go through this course. We've designed that sort of way. Right. Um, even if you and if you do have coding experience, uh, there's still quite a few differences between uh, Solidity and, um, and, you know, whatever other language that, you know, Python, JavaScript, whatever, what have you, um, there's definitely some differences. So it's, it's a very good thing to walk through. So basically by the end of it, um, you know, and, and going down through here, we'll end up having basically two projects that you build out uh, where you'll have, uh, you'll learn how to create your own smart contracts, right? So we talked about the different types of smart contracts you're gonna be building in there. You're gonna learn all the basics behind that. And then you're also gonna be able to create and release your own crypto coins and NFTs. So create them and then also put them up on 
this test net, like Alexander was saying, and then into the actual blockchain itself. So you'll have a uh, very cool, by the end of the class, you'll have your own coin. Um, Alexandra, you correct me if I'm wrong, but you could call it Alexandra coin if you wanted to. Um, for sure, yeah. To start buying it, you know? <laughs> yep, you could, for sure. I don't know if anyone will buy it. You'll need probably some marketing or some other project tied to it. But yeah, you could create your own coin. Absolutely. I, I, I could tell you we're definitely going to create Lumi Wealth coin. For sure, by the end of this class. <laughs> cool, awesome. Uh, so there's a couple more questions in here. Um, I'm going down. Uh, do you need Do you need years of experience? So we, we talked about that. That you don't have to be a coder to go through this course. We specifically did that. Um, I know we discussed that back and forth. Um, Ronaldo asks: Is designing in the blockchain free from patent and trademark infringements? There's several ways I could interpret the question. If you're talking about an NFT right now, there is not really much trademark laws in NFTs just because it's so new. So that's why you can make an NFT of something like Mona Lisa because, or something like even some kind of internet image because there's so little copyright laws currently, there are very few patent and trademark laws within in the NFT space. I imagine though in the future that there will be more patent and trademark laws. It's kind of hard to enforce too, right? Because it's across countries. So even if it's in the US, your, your patent infringement, you can still trade it in India or something like that, right? It's kind of hard to, to enforce that, right? Oh, yeah. As, as with a lot of these blockchain things, right? Um, Eugene asks, uh, if you take this course and complete it, will you be effective enough to move into a blockchain development career, even if you have never coded before? Yes, we will take you from, even if you've never coded, we'll cover all the fundamentals of Solidity. And then by the end of it, you will have a lot of projects. So if you are applying for some kind of blockchain job, you'll actually have a portfolio. Because the benefit is that these days, if you want to get a job in blockchain, well, a lot of universities don't have a blockchain degree. They don't even have blockchain courses. So employers are more so looking at what experience you actually have. Do you have a portfolio? Do you, can you pass a test if they test you on some coding skill? So that is the benefit of taking the on proof of your experience. Great. Awesome. That's a great answer. Thanks, Alexandra. Um, Robert asks, uh, are, are you going to cover Etherscan? Etherscan briefly. Now, if anyone has a question at any point, we can, of course, go deeper into that specific topic. We'll also have the after hours questions. If you have any questions, we can make you a video explaining any topic you like. Absolutely. Thank you for that. And, and actually, um, it's a great point to say is uh, this is the advantage of live classes, right? Um, if you're watching something on, on the internet or whatever, you just watch what they have. But if you have a specific question, you want to go into something, you know, that's the advantage of a live class. They so can actually ask that sort of thing. We're going to be giving you guys lots of support. So if there's any kind of topic like that, that you're interested in, we can actually cover it. All right. So good question. Thanks, Robert. Uh, Yemi asks, uh, what programming language is Solidity using? Solidity is the language itself. So Solidity is very similar to JavaScript, although it does have some key differences. Solidity is the language itself. Cool. Thank you. Um, Nahush asks, sorry, I missed your presentation, but my question is, is there a crypto trading course as well as simply creating NFTs and new cryptocurrencies? So I'll, I'll actually answer that question. So uh, we're working on a crypto trading course um, soon. We're planning to release that sometime in like February, March, um, where we'll teach you how to create algorithms that trade crypto. So we're going to be doing that sort of thing. We're also debating just a, a course itself on just like crypto trading without even needing algorithms, just kind of like the general concepts around it and like things like Uniswap and SushiSwap and altcoins and how to make sure you don't, don't get scammed. Um, so that's a course that we've been considering that would be maybe just not even any coding at all. Um, if that's something you guys are interested in, please let me know because um, we can we can build these sort of things out for you and, and find some great people like Alexandra to, to teach you about that sort of thing. Um, so another question here from CC, um, if creating a token slash coin slash NFT, to what extent would we need to hire securities attorneys to comply with SEC regulations? 
Well, if you just want to build your own token or coin or NFT, you don't have to hire a securities attorney. If you're getting into more complicated projects, if you're starting your own blockchain company where you actually are building applications that use blockchain, then that's where you get into more of the legal requirements. But just to create your own token, at this point, you don't need that. Well, thanks, Alexandra. Uh, and then Mel asks, uh, can you show me part two, Solidity Advanced Concepts? Uh, so I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to show you that. You know, Solidity Advanced Concepts, there you go. Is there any specific question they have around this, Mel? There we go. There it is. Um, cool. Awesome. Um, so I, th I think that's most, okay, there we go. So Nehush asks, uh, how does this interface with the metaverse? Uh, how much potential is there in this space as an entrepreneur? I'm very new to this concept. Well, as an entrepreneur, there is a lot of potential because you can build your own projects, your own websites. For example, in this course, we'll cover how to build some contracts and how to build a coin and, NF and the token. But the next step would be you could build your own decentralized website. You could use everything that you learned to build your own game, to build your own thing and advisement firm or to just become a freelancer so there's tons of opportunity because in a lot of industries whether it's from healthcare to just data storage tons of companies are springing up that use blockchain technology cool awesome thanks for that alexandra yeah absolutely there's a lot of entrepreneurial experience there's so many companies growing up uh in this space that absolutely if you're an entrepreneur Without a doubt, there's lots and lots of uh, things to do here. I even know as a fact, I think um, I think funding for blockchain-based companies uh, is like significantly shot up over the past little bit. There's a graph I was seeing on, on CB Insights that I think funding the blockchain companies has increased something like 500% in the past year. It's, it's just, it's wild, right? So if, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to be in this space, I mean, absolutely. It's a lot of funding behind it. Uh, lots of VC money, angel money. I mean, it's. It, I don't think that's surprising to anyone, right? Just the, just how quickly everything's grown. Oh. So absolutely, yes. Um, okay, and then Mel asks, um, so uh, I asked uh, basically, you know, when to go back to part two and, and solidity advanced concepts. And I asked the question, is there anything specific that uh, Mel wants to know? And uh, uh, they write back, uh, bank contract and XRP, can you use the Ripple technology? And then uh, follow up here is, uh, sorry, can you use the Ripple and XRP to create a bank or international coin for bank or other country? Yes, you can create a bank contract and you could tie it with other technology, especially in the future as more of these technologies start to transition to decentralized ones instead of using how they've previously operated. Well, awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could definitely create contracts like that using um, using Solidity. And even though it's in Ethereum, you can still interface with XRP, right? It's like it's, it's you can still build a bridge between those two, right? Um, okay, cool. Um, Eugene asks, so in the future, will you have more advanced courses? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we're definitely going down this path. Um, we are fully committed to, to building more and more uh, courses around blockchain and uh, cryptocurrencies in general. It's a hot topic. Um, you guys tell me what you want to get next. You know, uh, my, our business only exists to serve you guys, to make you guys happy. So you tell me what you want and we can go out and, and create those sorts of things for you, right? Uh, but yeah, in, in general, we do have it on a roadmap to create more advanced classes uh, in all sorts of topics. Um, you know, something that we've spoken about already with, uh, with Alexandra is, um, uh, when we first designed this course, uh, we wanted to put in some JavaScript on, and how to build your own website, that sort of thing. Uh, we thought that was maybe a little bit too advanced for people that have never coded before, uh, but we could actually make that as a more advanced class where you can take what you've learned here and apply it to actually building a website and really uh, monetize this sort of thing as well. So that's one idea, but there, there's a lot of other uh, potential things that we can go through. So you guys let me know what you'd be interested in. Um, as we're going through the course itself, I think we'll learn a lot about kind of where the next steps are and then what else we can build out. Uh, but generally speaking, yes, we're, we're planning on having more and more courses after this on this topic. Thank you for the question, Eugene. Um, so another question here from Robert. 
uh, at everyone, Google dApps, plenty of use cases, right? Thank you, Robert. Um, and he's just notifying us, uh, decentralized apps, dApps, there's lots and lots and lots of stuff happening there. Absolutely. And, and basically, um, in, in a sense, you're learning how to create a, a dApp uh, in this course, right, Alexandra, in, in some ways. Am I correct in saying that? Well, in this course, you're learning how to create contracts which are used in dApps, but to create an actual decentralized app, you would have to have also the actual app interface. So in this masterclass, we're not going to do the actual app interface, but we will have contracts which do form part of a dApp. Very perfect. Yeah, so basically you need to do the JavaScript side of things, right? You need to build the actual website, the interfaces with the contracts, right? Cool. Awesome. Uh, Ronaldo asks, do you see any real threat from the government in the USA in the limitation or use of the blockchain? I would see more of a threat if there is a company that's using the blockchain for a scam or for money laundering. Some companies are already in trouble for those purposes. Um, otherwise, I don't see any real threat if everything is being used ethically. And as long as the government's not a dictatorship, then I don't see any threat. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another question here. Uh, so uh, will this course help understand, create, be com competent with DAOs, so decentralized autonomous organizations? We will talk a lot about decentralized systems in general. Blockchain is just one technology in decentralized technologies. So because you'll learn so much about how decentralized technology works, that will help you understand decentralized autonomous organizations. Great, awesome. Thanks, Alexandra. Um, Mel asks, uh, regulation from SEC and OC OCC. Sorry, I don't know what the context of that is. Um, I, I don't know if you could, uh, actually, I guess this comes from, maybe this comes from uh, Robert's uh, comment here. Uh, Ronaldo and add everyone, uh, search YouTube for the MIT class give by the SEC Commissioner Commissioner Gary Gensler is an ex excellent companion to this course. That is actually a very good point, uh, Robert. Um, so for those of you that don't know, the SEC Commissioner, the, the one that's in power right now, uh, we'll see how much longer he's in there, but he actually has a course that teaches people about regulation in the blockchain, which I think is fascinating. Um, I personally haven't watched it, but I've heard good things. Um, and it's, it's an MIT course by, by this SEC Commissioner, Gary Gensler. And I think um, if you want to learn about regulation, you can learn it straight from the camel's mouth. I mean, they're the ones making the regulation. So I think uh, he's a good person to learn from in, in that respect. So great comment, Robert. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And, and Mel, I guess that the context make, that uh, question makes more sense now in this context. Yes. It's from the regulation from the SEC. Um, Nahush asks, so last question for me, uh, is cybersecurity an issue for cryptos? And is this something we should take into consideration, especially for a business? You should always take cybersecurity into consideration. Um, definitely, if you have a very prominent company, because crypt cryptocurrency is so hot, if you are exchanging a lot of cryptocurrency in your company, if there's a high volume, then you are at a higher risk of being hacked, getting your money stolen, having some kind of fraudulent transactions being sent to your company. So it's definitely something to be aware of just in general for any business. And if you have a crypto business with a high trading volume, but if you're just building out some kind of decentralized project, your data should actually be more secure than a non-decentralized project. Absolutely. Um, and I'll, I'll even take that further is uh, if, if you're ever building anything in with financial technology involved, um, whenever you're, you're transacting money online, you need to worry about security, right? Um, blockchain makes it a lot easier in many ways, right? Definitely uh, makes the security part a little bit easier in, in many aspects. I've built a lot of these finance applications. Believe me, I know firsthand uh, people trying to hack us, um, been through it many times. Um, you always need to pay attention to security, but blockchain definitely makes it a lot easier to deal with. Um, okay, so D asks, uh, what are the other more advanced courses you currently offer? Uh, so I'll take that question. So right now we have other courses that we uh, that we offer. We have courses on algorithmic trading, on machine learning for trading, and on option trading. You can read about any one of those there. 
Um, we don't have anything else on cryptocurrencies or blockchain in particular. Right now, this is our first course in blockchain and crypto. Um, so um, this is definitely our first course there. I think even if you have a programming background, I, th I think you'll still feel quite challenged in this course. There's a lot of new concepts, uh, not just from a blockchain perspective, but from coding. And there's a lot, a lot of things to learn here. Uh, believe me, I have a coding background and this stuff is still can be quite challenging. Um, so it's not, doesn't come without that. I mean, if you have a programming background, I wouldn't say, you know, it's going to be super simple, right? Um, but if you're asking about the more uh, advanced courses, um, you know, we're, we're going to be coming out with uh, more advanced courses in blockchain in the future. We haven't made those yet, right? Okay, uh, so Ronaldo asks, uh, if I want to open up a business with what I learned from this class, what can I offer like creating smart contracts and NFTs? Mm -hmm. Yes, you could freelance yourself as a smart contract developer, building smart contracts either for yourself or for another company. You could also become a blockchain advisor for companies. A lot of companies are starting to implement more decentralized technology in their current system. Perhaps they're trying to implement some kind of blockchain or decentralized section to their current process. You could also build projects just on your own and release them like a decentralized website, decentralized app or game. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity to start your own business. Absolutely. Definitely. Uh, and, and especially if you, you combine it with uh, the ability to build some sort of websites like JavaScript, then there's your imagination can run wild. <laughs> there's so many different things that are coming up. Uh, everything from games to trading NFTs to all sorts of stuff, you know? Yes, especially as the web transitions to Web 3.0. Absolutely. Okay. Um, the other, another question here. So uh, Mel says, U.S. Treasury Office of Financial. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you, Mel. Um, uh, CC says, thank you, Robert Seedorf. Absolutely. He's, he's definitely mentioning some cool stuff there. Ronaldo says, nice. Um, and I think, uh, I think that's uh, all the questions here. Uh, definitely lots of questions that you guys had. Um, all right, so um, before we finish up, uh, I think we've covered pretty much everything. Any last comments? Any last comments, uh, Alexandra? Well, I'm very excited to take everyone through this course. I think the collaboration and the community aspect is especially exciting because you can meet your next business partner through the course if you have the same interests. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that the community aspect of this is definitely a huge part of, of Lumi Wealth in general. I think for this course as well, uh, not only are you going to be learning from uh, this excellent instructor here, Alexandra, who's very knowledgeable and, and obviously very excited and, and good at speaking about this stuff, um, but also you get to know other people in the class as well where you guys can work on projects together, potentially. Uh, maybe some of you guys end up building businesses together. I think that'd be really cool. Um, I'd love to help in any way that I can with that sort of thing too. Yeah. Um, there's a couple more questions that came in here. There's also one in the Q&A. Uh, Kevin asks, uh, quantum computing too. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what the context of that is, Kevin. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Kevin. If you want to type into the chat, maybe uh, elaborate on that a little bit. I'm not sure what you mean by quantum computing. Alexandra, do you know kind of what he means by that? It could be a suggestion for some more advanced course. Okay, cool. That would be pretty cool, quantum computing for sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Tom asked, so thank you both and others input. Uh, this has been quite an eye opener and I begin this adventure. I see some tremendous potential and getting excited about the potential here. Very cool. Thank you, Tom. I definitely agree with you on that. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be taking this course too. Um, I want to make, by the end of this course, I want to make Lumi coin and a bunch of NFTs on all sorts of different things. You know, maybe we'll like NFT our courses or something. I don't know. <laughs> I've heard it's happening. I've heard people doing that actually. Um, Robert commented here, uh, everyone. I'm also a customer of a company that is looking hard for developers, Celsius.network, and they are partnered with Voyager. Awesome. Actually, no, uh, I've heard of Celsius uh, in quite a few contexts. So um, 
and in terms of the job stuff, uh, you heard it here first from from Robert uh, saying that uh, they're they're looking hard for developers, and and that's true because like no one knows how to do this right now. There's such a high demand for it, um, but no one really knows how to code this stuff. So I've heard some pretty wacky salaries for people that know how to code blockchain. Um, and if that's something you guys want to get into, then absolutely we can help you out with that whole sort of thing. Um, and, you know, again, the advantage of being part of the community is you get access to that whole network. So you get to know uh, other people that are looking for developers, looking for uh, talent, that sort of thing. Right. So absolutely. Thank you for that, Robert. It's great. Uh, D says, thank you both. Would you recommend learning any other programming languages in conjunction with this? I would recommend JavaScript. As we've already talked about today, JavaScript is quite similar in syntax and how it looks to Solidity. So I would recommend learning it for that reason and also so that you could build the front end for a lot of projects. Like you could build a website and then connect it to blockchain. Yeah, kind of like a crypto kitties or, or like a game or voting or whatever, right? Yes, any kind of web app. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. It's a good question, D. Um, Kevin asks, uh, QC courses. I think that's about quantum computing. Yeah, quantum computing courses. Yeah, we don't have any plans yet for quantum computing courses. Um, but if that's something that uh, you're interested in, some other people are interested in, uh, we could definitely uh, explore that option. Um, so first I've ever heard anyone asking for that, but I think that would be very cool. Uh, quantum computing, I think, is uh, has a huge potential going forward. Um, I don't think being used too much yet, um, but definitely if you're if you're in machine learning or doing anything with lots of processing power, uh, quantum computing, could, I think, could be very valuable. Uh, so we could definitely explore that option for sure. Uh, Yolanda says, uh, yes, I'm so excited about everything LumiWealth has so far. Thank you very much, Yolanda. We, we try to listen to you guys, right? Um, uh, looking forward to working with you and training with you all. Awesome. Thanks, Yolanda. And wel welcome to the community. You know, uh, this is what we're trying to build here. So we're trying to build good courses, but also great people around, you know, um, lots and lots of really cool stuff coming from this. And, you know, really just listen to you guys. That's it. You know? Um, okay, Ronaldo says, I believe the Metis Metaverse will be big. Do you think we can imply or put projects on there? I imagine that you could combine Metaverse with some kind of decentralized technology. I haven't exactly seen exactly what projects you could do with that, but we could look into it and do Electron it if needed. Yeah, um, and, and to actually take that stuff further, I actually have a friend who's building a company uh, for the metaverse, uh, doing like virtual reality applications. And one of the ways that they're using, uh, they're actually using blockchain as well, uh, is basically you can tokenize, create an NFT for a physical object in the, the metaverse, right? So let's say you buy a Nike sneaker, right? Um, they'll also sell you an NFT. There's new sneakers now where you get an NFT along with your sneaker. And then you could take that NFT and that's proof that you own it and you can put it into the metaverse and wear it as a character in the metaverse. So it's one, one example that I know a friend of mine is developing. All right. It's a great question. Cool. Uh, CC says, uh, with so many coins and tokens available, where might Alexandra see consolidation going? Well, right now, if you do want to build a coin or a token, you do have to follow a standard. So that way your coin, your token is compatible with these different exchanges these different platforms otherwise they might only you might only be able to trade them on one website so there already is some kind of standardization happening for coins and tokens great perfect thank you uh we have a question here from charisma uh which is uh the recommendation for 10 to 12 hours uh, that we put on the website uh, is that on top of the two hours in class um, so we, when we put that up, it's actually eight to 12 hours. Um, that includes the two hours of lecture time when we put that up. Um, Alexander, do you want to speak to a little bit about how, how much time you think someone should dedicate towards this course every week? Sure. It depends on number one, how much experience you have. If you already have coding experience and you know what a variable is, it's going to be easier because you already know the theory. So it does depend on how much experience you have and also if you want to practice how much time you have for example if we build a contract in class and you want to expand on it then it's going to take you more time but if you just want to stick to what we did then it won't take you the extra hours 
Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I definitely think this is doable, especially if you're uh, someone who has, uh, you know, a full-time job, something like that. I think it's a very doable thing to learn. Um, and again, also keep in mind that you're going to have the, the, the recordings you'll have access to forever, right? So you can watch those whenever you want. And also if, you know, for whatever reason, um, you, you want to switch to the next class, we're very flexible about that too. So if you start in January, something happens, you want to switch to the next class later on, you're more than welcome to do that switching, right? And of course, we're, we're available here to answer any questions and, you know, get on one-on-one -on -one calls or whatever it is that you need uh, to, to make sure that you learn that faster uh, and, and don't get stuck, right? Cool. Awesome, great. Um, any other questions, guys? There's been a lot of good ones. A lot, a lot of really uh, excited people here. This is very cool. Right. Um, I guess we can give it a little bit more time. Okay. Eugene says here, um, can you go back over the discounts uh, that can be applied right now? Sure. So uh, right now, the best discount that you can get on this is this Black Friday deal. You would have gotten this in your um, in your email uh, coupon. So here's a Black Friday coupon. I put it again into the chat. Um, you you have also gotten this in in your emails. Uh, we're gonna be sending out text messages around this as well. Uh, but that's the best coupon you can get. It's twenty five percent off. Uh, we also have um, uh, an early bird special going on in the course, but it's only twenty percent. So if you want to save that extra money, um, really you should be using that Black Friday coupon. Uh, after that Black Friday coupon expires, then the next best one to use is early bird special. You cannot combine them. It's you use one or the other. So uh, if you really want to save some money right now, uh, then make sure that you use that Black Friday coupon and it's right there uh, in, in the chat, right? And it should be in your emails as well. Uh, Ronaldo says, uh, will we learn how a token will be backed up with another asset? Uh, act like a derivative, for example, is it backed up by gold, silver, Bitcoin, et cetera? We won't be specifically building a project like that, but we will talk in theory about how some of these tokens already exist that are backed by things like the US dollar. And if you wanted to, if you had a question about how you could build a contract for that, then we could answer that question and show you how it works. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's kind of like USDT or, or all that sort of stuff, right? Yes, like Tether tied to the US dollar. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, you know, uh, Renault says act like the derivative. Um, yeah, so I guess like backed by gold, backed by silver, et cetera, right? Uh, and I think they're, they're, they're all probably going to be the exact same sort of mechanism, whether it's the US dollar or gold or silver. I think it's probably a very similar uh, type of thing that you have to do for each one of them, right? Mm -hmm. cool. Yes, yeah, so it would be all in the contract that you write. Absolutely. Um, so we have another question here. Uh, so Vikas says, um, if we are new to programming and we don't get it the first time, can we take the class again or we have to sign up again? Uh, and I'll answer that question. And, and you know, if, if you're brand new to programming and this is way past, which I hope it's not because we, we specifically designed this course in such a way that even if you don't know how to code, you'll be able to get through this class. It's not going to be that difficult for you. Um, we specifically designed it for that. But if for whatever reason, it doesn't matter what it is, um, you can you can retake the course, right? So let's say uh, you're learning this course, you found it a little difficult, you want to retake it, you can do that. That's no problem. If something came up at work, you want to retake it, that's no problem too. Um, for whatever reason, you can retake this course and, and it's no additional charge to you, right? That's definitely one of the benefits of taking this live class. You could retake it as many times as you want. Yeah, no problem. Great. That's great. Even universities don't do that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So the advantages of being able to innovate in this space, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I think we could build a much cooler company than, than a lot of these universities. I think they're they're a little bit behind the curve at this moment. You know? Yes, even if if even if you try to find Yeah, absolutely. There's there's a lot less courses around the blockchain, all this sort of stuff, especially. Yeah, uh, we have another question here uh, from Tom. Uh, With the very minimal experience I have, primarily just beginning to read and learn about everything going on, can you suggest a solid, i.e., reputable p a place to begin learning these, I guess, concepts? Uh, I feel behind the power curve at this point. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, it can be very overwhelming. That's why it helps to have 
some kind of structured curriculum because it is overwhelming to learn it on your own. I'm sure we could recommend some recorded classes, recorded courses that we have. Well, awesome. Do you have any books or anything that maybe you could re uh, recommend? Actually, it's fine. I saw blockchain for babies, but that's probably too <laughs> beginner. But yeah, I did see that one. That was pretty funny. Blockchain um, for babies. <laughs> there's the for dumb. Right. The problem of them are high or technical. But I kind of streamline where there's some kind of curriculum that's already been done for you if you're struggling to make sense of just searching it on your own. Yeah. So, Alexander, would you mind repeating that a little bit? Your internet kind of froze up a bit there. Oh, sure. Um, let's see. I would recommend finding some kind of curriculum that has been done for you already, like perhaps a recorded course. I'm sure we could recommend and send you links where it's already been found for you what you need to know if you're overwhelmed with searching it yourself online. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Cool. Or blockchain for babies, right? <laughs> yes, and we will teach you the theory from scratch as well. We're going to cover even what is blockchain again in week one. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, a lot of this is definitely going to be covered in the course for sure. Absolutely. Um, Tom says, uh, I like your presentation style. I, I do too, by the way, Alexandra. So thank you, Tom. And, you know, uh, and thanks, LOL. <laughs> Great, perfect. Cool. Uh, any other questions, guys, before we uh, finish up for the day? This has been a, a very fun session, by the way. Um, and thank you very much for your time, Alexandra. This is a fascinating topic. Um, I mean, I've been in this space for a while, but I feel like I'm still learning so much. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm going to be joining this course and I want to learn specifically how to do this stuff too. Um, create LumiCoin and, and NFTs for our courses and all that, you know. Um, cool. Uh, we have another question here. Um, so CC says that this is great. Thank you, Alexandra, Robert, and all. Thank you very much. Uh, and then Renal says, I am very well, well versed in finance, but for those who aren't, will they have trouble understanding the concept of crypto? No, you will not. You don't have to be well versed or even versed at all in finance because we will tell you everything from the scratch, from a baby point of view even. <laughs> we will... Yes, you don't have to be some kind of finance guru to understand crypto. Anyone can learn it. Absolutely. Apparently, even babies. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and to be honest with you, I think, uh, I think a lot of crypto concepts are actually quite different from regular finance concepts, right? So um, even having like a strong finance background sometimes isn't always the help, most helpful thing for crypto because it's so wildly different, right? So learning from stuff from scratch, I think that uh, makes a lot of sense, you know? Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, if we don't have any more questions here, we've had quite a few of them. I have definitely enjoyed my time with all you guys. This has been awesome. Uh, thank you very much, Alexandra, for your time as well. Can't wait to have this course start. It's going to be it's very exciting. It's going to be very cool um, and definitely want to get more and more into this. You know, <laughs> uh, Robert just put a joke. Um, no, no to finance, but you will need a graduate degree in math. Joking. <laughs> Surprisingly, you don't even need much math. Yeah, we've definitely made this course as, as simple as possible. Uh, so you can get really, uh, like Alexander said, get to the point of it, right? Like this is much more of a practical type of course where you're going to come out of it with actually having projects that you've built, have a portfolio for if you want to apply to jobs, uh, and you could create your own tokens, create your own NFTs, create your own business. Uh, this is basically what we've uh, created this course for, to be very practical in nature and not have all this because we could, if we wanted to get into a lot of the math behind blockchain, but I don't think it's actually very helpful for, for those of you that are trying to build out projects. You know? Yes. It's very easy to get overwhelmed. That's why the best way to learn is through projects that are very specific. So you don't get overwhelmed. And you, some people think that coding involves a lot of math, but surprisingly it, it doesn't require that much math unless you're doing some like games where you have to go into physics. A lot of coding doesn't need that much math. Absolutely. I'll second that. I, I'm, I'm personally a proponent of teaching less math in school and teaching more coding instead. You know? I think it's a much more useful thing. You know? I've, I've never used calculus a day in my life after, after university. You know? um, cool. Awesome. 
All right, guys. Um, so like, like, like I said, this has been a, a, a great, uh, great session. There's a lot of you guys on this. Um, lots of great questions. And thank you very much, guys, for, for attending. Um, thank you very much, Alexandra. This has been a uh, very informative and, and a, a great presentation. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys in this course. You know, uh, like I said, I'm going to be taking it as well in January, uh, this time around as, as a student, not as an instructor, right? Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to learning this stuff and uh, hopefully see you guys in this course. You know, um, and again, if you guys want to save some money, um, put out that Black Friday code one more time. Um, make sure you sign up by the 25th of November because that's going to save you 25%, uh, which comes out to being you know, a couple hundred bucks, right? So if you want to save that money, make sure you sign up by then. Uh, you guys can do those payment plans so you don't have to pay all up front. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys in January in the course. Thank you, everyone. Awesome, thank you. Uh, and CC, by the way, um, if you want to get the if you want to get the recording behind this, go to our YouTube page. Uh, right now, it's live. Afterwards, this is going to be a course record. It's going to be a recording, right? So you'll be able to find it on our YouTube. All right. Cool. Thank you very much, everybody. All right. Have a good night.